welcome back so today we're going to talk about black holes so um, um just to to uh, put a context on it so black holes is interesting for many reasons it is one of the mysteries still in cosmology and when it comes to the universe so um maybe could you give us a short intro what is a black hole well from my <laughs> understanding a black hole is basically a very large gravity well or collapsed star where there is infinite mass at a singular point so a singularity that is so massive that no object can escape its gravitational pull mm -hmm. particle wave or so light is even trapped mm -hmm. and then so the mysteries about the black holes I mean, I, I think it was seen as science fiction just like 50, 100 years ago. Yeah. More or less. And it's more like, well, it's the reality thing. Like, it's a real thing. I'm actually curious as to when a black hole as a cosmological object was first described, even. Yeah. It, it could I mean, it's definitely in the past 100 years, but I would. I would guess, but I'm not sure when. But was it first predicted through the math? Maybe. I I, I do not know that. That's <laughs> an interesting thing when you said you know in 5100 years. Yeah. Maybe. Well, because the more I've been looking into this, is like 100 years ago, we still like just one galaxy. There was no like we didn't know about any other galaxies. So, <laughs> and now yeah. it's like oh, there's a hundred billion of them <laughs> that we can see. And I think it was even within that same period when they, you know, really discovered what was even going on in stars, even our closest star, the sun. At one point, there was a physicist whose name escapes me right now, but one night he had come up with this theory about what goes on inside a star that generates all the energy. And he took his wife out and brought her out to sh show her all the stars and said, I am the only person who understands what is going on and all these stars like the, the nuclear reactions because yeah. it, it's you, you know it's, he, he finally come up with the idea yeah. and it's so fast it's so new so much of this mm -hmm. um yeah well and i, I just i still i'm fascinating about this that they are the factories of like the material factories right especially like any piece of gold <laughs> comes from the core of a star i still think that's a beautiful yeah. thing <laughs> oh i loaded star from the early universe that lived out its life and died and at some point collapsed in on itself and was not massive enough to form a black hole so they collapsed in yeah. and explode and that's how you know a lot of material is spread across exactly i saw that after three minutes after the big bang you have you have a uh, hydrogen and helium, like just clouds of that in three minutes. So that's, uh, yeah, I think we mentioned last time, like that's where, <laughs> when right, it started. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the black hole, yeah, just the funny thing you mentioned last time about this, uh, the particle accelerator in CERN, yep. and the people are scared that you're gonna start a black hole or a new universe, a big bang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said something about why that won't happen, probably. Yeah, so that what this, yeah. the smartest guys apparently theorized is that even if we were to create a black hole or a singularity of, like this in a laboratory, that it wouldn't be able to persist, meaning it would be too small to suck up all the matter like a true black hole does because of what's called Hawking's radiation, which is something that Stephen Hawking theorized about how black holes, they radiate mass and energy in some form so that they eventually shrink. And for the smaller an object, a singularity, it's theorized that the greater this radiation is. So a very small, um, black hole would lose energy and mass much more quickly than a large one, uh, supposedly. 
what's a small in this context? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> like a, a golf ball or is a or like I well I, I think even a no, millimeter. So so the in physics there's a scale called a Planck length. Yeah. Which is the theoretical limit to how small something can be. It would be mm -hmm. the the absolute smallest unit of length that could possibly be. So in a large black hole or a small black hole, yeah. I think it's theorized that they would both be at this the, the same size, this Planck length. So there's no, the actual black hole itself uh, yeah. is at one point and at this smallest scale. Yeah. It, but is it, I mean, is it considered mass? Is it, like, is it the quarks? Like, or is it the count? <laughs> so, all, so everything in a black hole would be in some other state as, as far okay. as uh -huh. understanding, where it's all been compressed into in, an infinitely small point, this like fundamental yeah. unit of, called a plot Planck length. Uh -huh. uh, and I think it's very difficult to visualize this because, you know, you think of a star and how massive they are, but the, the most massive stars are these, you know, neutron stars, which are stars that have collapsed in on themselves. So they're actually much smaller, but they're much, much more dense, much heavier. Yeah. And then a black hole would be one of these gone to the extreme where that star even collapses in on itself and is, it occupies basically no volume, mm. but it has this mass to it, this gravity potential. So everything gets sucked into it. And what they, they theorize in these particle accelerators is you would create one of these singularities, which is so small at this fundamental length, but it wouldn't be the massive gravity well because it would be so small. And mm. even if it was, you know, more massive, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be sustainable because, I mean, when you think of a black hole, it's millions and billions of times the mass of the earth. So if they were to create one of these that was so small, mm. singularity on earth, they could only use all the material on earth. So it would be very small. Mm. <laughs> it would be a small gravity well <laughs> versus the, black hole which is an immense one exactly small small black hole with the whole earth sucked into it <laughs> right so, so, I, so i think that one way to understand it is that when when you're thinking about a black hole it's it's not there's not a large black hole and a yeah. small black hole there's yeah. one size for a black hole but its potential to suck other objects in yeah is relative to the mass exactly of, yeah and that's the is that the horizon they call it the, yeah so the, the the event horizon is and i'm not entirely sure if this the size of the event horizon is yeah. relative to the black hole i would assume it is just to think could it be called something else than a hole i mean because if you think of it like a a point which is with an extreme gravitational field, like it's yeah. So it's I, a I hole think because it goes into it, but it's kind of a well. I guess they, they didn't want to call it like a, a like a like extreme dense little pinprick thing. They wouldn't call it that because it's more confusing. Right. Yeah. So I'm I'm not sure. So I, I mean, it, it's often called a, a singularity. So it's yeah, a okay. singular. <laughs> <laughs> the third third uh, participant yes <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> um yeah and but i guess the hole is also because there's no light in it so it kind of it looks like right yeah so there'd be a hole in the yeah. satellite telescope imagery where this would be because no light would be able to pass it or do you, do you know the the time as like this um if it, if it has infinite mass and also like one of the things that just the two videos made so far but that but this um light well what happens at the tip of the light beam like there's no time <laughs> yeah. 
uh, for for if like for the tip of the it's like there's no time and there's no space. It's mm. just like it's impossible to understand this. But is it the same with the black holes? Like in the singularity, like time stops or like, or it's, it's easier to understand with in the middle of a black hole. I think because it's a uh, well, if if there's no nothing happening, there's no change. It's just like this frozen thing with extreme mass. Mm-hmm. You can kind of conceptually accept that nothing is happening, <laughs> and then there's no time because there's nothing kind of right except things being sucked in. But yeah, so so I, I think the way that they look at it is there's no information co- can go into or can come out of the black hole. So yeah. if you can't observe it, it's you know frozen in space. Yeah. Time. Exactly. Something. Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, like the, so, and this is another thing, like, I, I enjoyed or love talking about this because of the, sometimes just the, cho- the, the choice of the words are important mm-hmm. to understand. And many things are named or labeled kind of a bit by coincidence, it seems. Right. And then, as, as a one, Roger Penrose was talking about, well, dark, he didn't like dark matter and dark energy, especially dark energy, because it's not dark. <laughs> and. Right. And like it's it's a bit by coincidence they call it, and then it kind of it creates misunderstandings with uh, with just the naming of it. So uh, for dark matter, matter and dark energy. I think the original reasoning reasoning for calling it dark was that it was unobserved and yeah, then unobservable. However, their theories and models predicted its existence, and and probably because you could see light being kind of drawn affected by it like mm-hmm. and then there's oh there's something here that's that there's a mass that we can't see but it's pulling the light around it so yeah yeah but i like this frozen uh image like like there's no time if you just think frozen that's i like i think that's helpful <laughs> in, yeah. in terms of thinking about the physics um yeah um but other, other things about like uh, well we have all this portal stuff about black holes but that's more purely science fiction i think (laughs) it's not even theoretically that's kind of uh the wormholes well yeah so i think that one of the things associated with black holes and a lot of the higher level physics you know you hear string theory and things like that where there are actually more dimensions than the three physical dimensions Uh that we exist in Mm -hmm. and that these dimensions may play some fundamental role in the physics in the dimensions that we exist in, yet yeah. these dimensions are unobservable for us in any way or form. It's like if you think, if you, if you took a piece of paper and you drew a little smiley face on that paper yeah. and you imagine he can look that smiley face can look in any direction on the paper, but he can't look out of the paper. Mm-hmm. So all he can see are lines and dots. Yeah. You know, on that paper, it, it, it can't see a cube because that's in the third <laughs> dimension. <Yeah. laughs> so, um, some, some people think that we're living in a world that exists you know, in more dimensions than three. However, somehow we've been confined the three of them yeah and then then we i mean touching on another interesting theme though with um, what the mathematics show or implies but we don't quite understand <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you use the math and it works but we don't we can't really grasp it with, with yeah. our brains <laughs> my <laughs> yeah it's just like a, a part of this, this, like the beginning episodes here, is to kind of just sort out like these topics are are, are kind of uh, they're, they're sorted or settled to some extent. These topics are kind of yeah debatable. This is like we don't know anything. Uh, but it, it did strike me last year, then watching lots of these documentaries, that uh, we don't know that much really, <laughs> and you have lots of placeholders like, like so. We make some some equations, some models, and then oh, this doesn't fit into it, and then you just make up something like the dark energy to, so the the equations still hold, but it's like yeah, but mm, 
<laughs> so, so they hold and they work for what we can see, but we know there needs to be this other part. So maybe there's something else there. Yeah, exactly. But it's and, again, then we're also back to my love of like high school physics of like from <laughs> the Newtonian stuff works in this small context and then you right. go to a bigger context, you need something more complicated, but you can reduce the complicated to the specific situation of the earth and then suddenly you're back to the same more simple form. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and we have a black hole in the middle of the galaxy. Is that confirmed? You know? I believe that's what they... <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any personal favorites though, like for like in, in cosmology or particle physics? You find most fascinating? So, what I find really fascinating about physics, and it's, I mean, it, it gets down to particles in a way, but is turbulence of air and gases and water. So that's uh -huh. one of the big unsolved problems in physics is how turbulence comes to exist and are there any equations governing mm. that. So there's another, you know, famous quote that said, the, the physicist says, you know, when I go to meet God, I want to ask him two things. I want to ask him about quantum mechanics and I want to ask him about turbulence. And I think he'll have an answer for quantum mechanics. <laughs> so what, what's the definition of turbulence? So, so turbulence is just the, the, the chaos in a moving fluid. And um, and which level of chaos this kind of qualifies? Anything greater than, so, so it's going to get a little more technical, than smooth yeah. laminar flow. So if you think of a very slow moving water, the water water's moving nice and uniformly, but as soon as you put like a little ridge or something, you get those little like bubbles and stuff just flowing on the top of the water. And there's no way to describe that. There, there are, you know, statistical models and things like that, but mm -hmm. there's no definition. And that's more an example in your everyday life. You can go and you can turn on the faucet and you can see the water rushing yeah. and hitting the bottom of your basin. And if it's not laminar flow, there's some element of turbulence there and there's no definitive answer on huh. solving that so it's a long way from I, the black holes but yeah that's, that's, <clears> my, throat> that's, throat> that's my favorite interesting topic in mm. but is it um does it have anything to do with chaos theory, theory? like is it not, not the, the chaos theory in that sense um but i believe it you know i don't think they have a real good answer at all at this point on what fundamentally causes, I mean, we know what causes the, the turbulence is the, the moving the fluid, but yeah. what, you know, if you, you're running water, which, which way each little particle within that fast moving water goes or the air going in one end of a jet and out the other engine in the, in a jet, you know, you can't really see that because it's, it's air, it's clear, but you can see the rushing water and there's, you know, the ebb and flow and it's just. So, so what, what you're searching for, is it a theoretical mathematical model of when or how it occurs and then how it unfolds or is it just? Yeah. The, yeah. Hmm. It sounds weird that it's like, it, sounds like something that you could um, find out <laughs> just because it's it's easy to to create turbulence like it's <laughs> to make it right. you know, we can say that turbulent flow will have a general behavior so if you've got a big pole in in rush in, in rushing water you know the water is going to be kind of like doing a wave up against that water and you can sort of give a, a describe a description of how high the water is going to rush up when it hits that but there's no way to tell like where uh, any one particle of water that hits uh, uh, a pier in a bridge, like where it goes. We have, a, we have a good understanding of the general, but when you get closer to the small 
scales, uh-huh. there's nothing. Okay. Sounds like the statistics, like you have to look at the different scale, like probabilities, statistics. Yeah, so that. that's basically how it's all done is in probability. Okay. Right? okay. Uh-huh. Um, and when I was in college, when we were first learning about this, I believe there's a Da Vinci drawing of water going under a bridge and our professor, you know, show us this and say, this was this, this drawing right here where he saw, he, he drew the, you know, kind of like little waves and stuff going on. He's like, he did a very good job at like capturing this because it's, it's not something you can really capture in a still frame, mm. but. And do you think it's going to be solved? I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> you need a new mathematics, maybe new new conceptual. It's possible. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, then we have yet another topic <laughs> to to ponder and to uh, to explore. Yeah. Um, yeah. That one. Just another. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. Any other last thoughts? I'm still hung up on this light thing <laughs> because I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> a light, you can see like a light beam going through the whole universe, but for the light beam, there's no space, there's no time. What is this? <laughs> like it's just, it's. I just think it's very like identifiable as a as a mystery, right. or just like it's outside the the capacity of the brain. So that's kind of, but. Yeah. Did you think that the like just to wrap up and back to the black hole? You think you're going to f- discover anything through research on black holes? Can can it be an, an kind of an opener to some some new discoveries that's going to be applicable to lots of stuff? I so here's the thing with physics: there are a lot of problems that yeah. some people just like to solve, and a lot of the time when people are solving them initially, they don't know what the answer is going to hold. Yeah. Well, is there something? immediately useful or unknown right now i don't know but eventually it could very well be yeah. extremely important mm. Makes sense. so mm. it's hard to know what you don't know yeah <laughs> it's so true <laughs> so but keep talking about it maybe you fine so yeah so maybe that's my last input here is uh, something I mentioned in one of the first two videos that the thought experiment of of the light beam up and down in a moving train coach or standing still it's so simple you can you can explain the thought experiment in, in like half a minute and that opened the like an that opened the door to like an enormous amount of of new knowledge in, within physics and you needed like old Greek geometry to. <laughs> To describe it mathematically so it's um i'm still kind of i'm thinking that just keep talking and and uh approaching it from from new perspectives and suddenly like ah oh, but what about this if this happened and that and then suddenly like yeah bingo then <laughs> keep talking about it keep thinking about it and you don't know where it will lead exactly cool uh all right so we're gonna stop it there and then continue a later time All right. okay so um uh for everyone watching you know, just leave your comments below if something was interesting or you have some questions and um uh, thank you for watching and uh, have a great day <laughs>